Hello my Halloweenies, welcome back to my channel for the video that refused to be made because the skirt fought me every step of the way. In my last video I had mentioned that I had purchased four bolts of glitter tool in order to make a really big spectacular Halloween project for myself and I did end up making a giant and fantastic Halloween project, but it didn't exactly go very smoothly for me. This project was designed after 1860s evening gowns, and in particular this skirt was based off the flounster tiered skirts that were extremely popular. Uh, three and five tiers of ruffles were the most common that I saw in fashion plates. In order to create the skirt, I followed the old Victorian way based off of other people's tutorials that they had put together of how they made their Victorian tiered skirts. In particular, these tiered skirts were generally made by constructing a gathered skirt with the tiers of ruffles sewn onto it in short strips rather than them all being mounted onto the waistband. Usually this is done on a layer of cotton or cambric or something that is a little bit more sturdy than what the ruffles is usually made out of with, you know, things like very lightweight, delicate lawns and muslins. But I decided to mount my ruffles onto a piece of tulle. So my starting base was a rectangle made from three panels of the entire width of my 60-ish inch wide tool uh, sewn together so that they would create a gathered skirt when mounted on a waistband. Although I did not start the actual waistband until I'd had the ruffles sewn on because sewing everything onto the waistband makes things very much more difficult, as I discovered later, when my ruffles were not long enough and I had to sew more ruffles onto this skirt. Once I had a base to sew everything onto, I had to actually create my ruffles. And there were, like, a lot of strips of ruffle ruffles. There are yards and yards and yards of ruffles. So I didn't feel too bad about not having anything too particular. A proper Victorian schoolgirl would probably have delicately gathered all of this with her tiny little running stitches and stroked all of the ruffles out so that the gathers were all smooth and perfect, but I did not, so I sewed all of my ruffleage together and then just used the very advanced technical method of bunching the fabric up and shoving it under the presser foot in order to gather up my fabric. Although not technically advanced, I did have to be kind of careful with how I gathered all of this because gathering the ruffles too densely would make my ruffles too short to go all the way across my panels of my base skirt, which they ended up being too short anyway because all the guides that I had read had told me be careful not to gather your ruffles too densely and then I did it anyway and it still didn't look great because the ruffles weren't nearly full enough because tulle is still less dense than cotton muslin or cotton lawn or wall or anything that you would typically make ruffles out of that's, you know, not modern glitter tulle.
With all my ruffles gathered down, I pinned them carefully onto my base skirt and kind of eyeballed them for length. My gathering wasn't particularly even at the top, so I was more concerned with actually covering the like top edge of my ruffle than I was with actually making sure that my ruffles were a certain amount away from the top of my skirt. One of my major problems was that I gathered my ruffle for the top one and then just sewed it and put it into the waistband as normal without accounting for the extra ruffling that gathering the waistband down would add to that ruffle. And I should have really just used the same amount because it ended up making the top ruffle much, much, much poofier than all of the rest of the ruffles, which wasn't a particularly good look. So I cut myself a piece of twill tape that was the correct measurement to be a waistband for this and double turned in the edges in order to finish those off and then added my hooks and eyes, which worked just fine. And then I had a struggle when attaching my waistband onto my skirt or my skirt onto my waistband because it was like a lot of skirt that I was attempting to fit in this waistband and I had to do my push and shove method as hard as I possibly could a couple of times and I still ended up having to go through and pleat my waistband when I went to sew it onto the actual waistband because it just, there was so much tool, it still didn't fit. There was so much tool in this. I used almost all of my tool in order to make this thing by the end of it. And then, with that finished, I put it on my dress form, expecting it to be done, and it looked like this. 
and I immediately hated it. You can see all of the tops of the ruffles. You can see that they're not evenly spaced. You can see how much bigger that top ruffle is compared to the other ones. While I was doing research into this, I discovered that most of these skirts were constructed with the ruffles attached to a base of cotton muslin or some other kind of cambric or something sturdy that the ruffles could be attached to without worrying about the skirt stretching out and collapsing. I had already invested like a lot of cotton into the petticoat, so I wasn't super thrilled about that. So I decided that I would take another layer of tulle and mount my ruffles onto that. And something that I kept encountering in advice when making those skirts was don't overestimate the amount of ruffling you need. Like 1.5 is enough for of a ruffle amount for most fabrics and even super lightweight ones, you probably won't need more than double your circumference on your panels in order to achieve an appropriate amount of rufflage on your skirt. However, glitter tool is even more lightweight than something like a ultra lightweight lawn or muslin, and it was it was not enough rufflage. I did not have nearly enough rufflage in order to make this skirt look nice. So in order to even moderately save this project, I added more longer ruffles atop my original ruffles to fill in the ruffles and also to make it so that my stretched out tool layer was hidden, even though it didn't 100% work and it's still kind of... The tops of the ruff ruffles still kind of stick out. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it was workable. Looking back on it, I could have just made a non-tiered skirt and probably had almost the same effect. So the skirt did get done eventually. It just took a lot longer than I had anticipated. And I had intended to release this video two weeks ago and the bodice the week after that, but as you can see, it things just didn't work out that way. So you will get to see the bodice, which didn't fight me nearly as much as the skirt did and turned out very, very pretty. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, in the final ball gown on Saturday. So like this video if you liked this video, subscribe if you would like to see those projects, and consider joining my Discord. The link is in the description. We are all artists, we all share one very well-intentioned brain cell there.